I mean, that's a wrap. Why even play the rest of the season? It is a Bills Eagles Super Bowl in the desert in Arizona. Case closed. Uh, to confirm or deny this, we have Lane Johnson in the building. Not really. He's in his bro barm joining us shortly. Mark Ingram will bring the energy as always. That really hurt. Chris Collins, we're stopping by the show now. Welcome to Up and Adam. So many guests, so little time. Week two wrapped up last night. Lots to get to. First, though, there was that scary scene in Buffalo last night. Bills cornerback Dane Jackson taken to the hospital after suffering a possible neck injury. Uh, we have great news to report this morning. According to NFL Network's Mike Garofalo, he was released from the hospital. All indications say that he avoided major injury. We, of course, from everyone uh, at Up and Adams behind the cameras and behind the scenes. And we, of course, wishing Dane a speedy recovery. The takeaway from this epic game. Uh, as, of course, the Bills are as advertised, which is so hard to do that we cannot look past it. So much hype. Even last night, you got Bruce Smith out there. You got Jim Kelly standing on the field leading chance. This isn't the postseason. This isn't a uh, Super Bowl thing. This is week two of the NFL season. There is so much pressure, such hype. But they are that team. Diggs is him. Allen and Diggs are them. They made the big swing with Vaughn. I'm mostly impressed, though, with the meaningful additions they made that flew under the radar a bit. How about Roger Saffold cementing them as one of the best O-lines? Nobody talked about that one. Uh, them not missing a beat without Dable. So impressed. And the fact that they were missing, if you take a look at a list here, Gabe Davis. No Trey White, no Ed Oliver, and they still look like this. These are guys that they were missing. Micah Hyde, who left injured in the third quarter. Week two, to me, didn't teach me anything. It reinforced what I already know. It did solidify one thing to me, though. No player, no one out there is having a better time than Josh Allen. He is all smiles. He has this youthful, magnetic exuberance. He's having the time of his life. And... Why that's so important to point out as we continue this ride with the Bills is that that is so difficult to do. The amount of pressure, the plate full of expectation, and he is out there embracing it and acting like, no big deal, I'm just out there doing what I love, getting the ball to this guy, this guy, and that guy, and making big plays. Now, we learned a little bit more, I think, from the Eagles and the Vikings game because Hurts is the story of the day. Maybe the week, maybe the entire season, who knows? 17 for 20 for 251 yards and a touchdown in the first half. Two touchdowns and 50 yards on the ground. That's just the first half, people. That is insane. Look, there's been times accuracy has been in question. Uh, nope. I saw the deep ball. People think that he doesn't have. Uh, yep, saw that one a lot last night. He got the ball to everyone. Smith, Goddard, Watkins. It was also the Darius Slay show. Two interceptions, could have been four, maybe should have been four. He, he had an answer to Justin Jefferson that I didn't think was possible. This Eagles team is winning the division, as I so said, right behind me during my preseason predictions. And I'm willing to say here on Up and Adams that if Jalen is able to continue this type of success through the air, this could be the best team in the NFC. I am not joking. And we'll see if our first guest agrees. And here he is joining us from, I believe, the bro barn, if I'm not mistaken, a Super Bowl champion, three-time pro bowler, all smiles as one of the pillars of the Eagles offensive line. Lane Johnson, hi. How you doing? I'm so good. Congrats. Uh, I'm going to just bring in Marissa. Look, I'm here in L.A. I want to get the vibe check on Philly. But this is my associate Robert, producer, baby. Marissa, who's Robert. obsessed. Uh -huh. And everyone, in, and even in L.A., is going crazy. Tell me about what's going on in Philly. Yeah. Uh, last night was a big game for us. Uh, they had a big week against Green Bay uh, last week, so we knew we had a, a big challenge. I feel like Jalen played out of his mind, and uh, the defense really had a great game. Slay, unbelievable game. Uh, two picks, could have had, like you said, probably four, but just playing lights out, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a big win. Yeah, I mean, Hurts put on an absolute clinic. It is the story of the day. Everyone, he's the toast of the town. What do you see in him? What's the biggest difference that you've noticed between this year and last year? I, I, I just feel like there's no substitution for experience. You know, the more you play, the, the more you... Uh, you know, had the ability to learn more about the game and learn from yourself. So, and uh, really, you know, just took a big step forward last night. I just think the things that he can do with his arm and legs are very unique and, um, you know, makes it very hard for the defense to, to control him. I feel like offensive linemen normally love to run block lane, and you guys run more yeah. than a lot of teams do. You were number one, the number one run game in the entire league last year. How fun is that? And how much do you prefer it? Uh, 
Well, like the past, like for like an offensive lineman, like there's very little upside to the game. Like the best thing you can do is not make a mistake. But like open up the game with like true empty or something. That's like jumping out of an airplane. You don't know if your parachute's working. It's just get, get ready to rock and roll. But uh, yeah, no, it, it definitely it's a lot of fun getting the tee off and uh, yeah, and I guess inflict pain instead of just taking it. Yeah, it sounds pretty fun there. Okay, we had Joe Thomas on the show, which was very fun, and he sung your offensive line's praises. Take a look. I think the Eagles have the best offensive line in the NFL because they have no weaknesses. It's also because they're they're not injured, because yeah. they do things the right way during training camp. If you look at their tackles, they probably have the best duo of tackles in the NFL, Jordan Mailata and Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson been doing it for a long High time praise. at right tackle. High praise from a future Hall, future Hall of Famer. Listen, you've been on a Super Bowl team. This is that kind of an offensive line. Does this team feel special? Uh, I feel like we're very talented. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of work to be done, I think, eliminating the distractions. And uh, really, I mean, going into each game, feeling like you're outgunned or outmatched. And uh, you have to prepare that way. I think it all starts in practice. And, uh, yeah, we just have a lot of, lot of good energy and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, looking forward to next week against Washington. And, uh, yeah, you, we, uh, I know we have a, a lot of ability, so it's just about taking it one week at a time. Lane, you're not even celebrating. You're already on to the next team stop. Yeah, I mean, it was a late night, too. I mean, we started at 8.30, probably got home at 1.30, so you give me it's third day off, too. So. Well, I love that you're joining us. What's that torture device to your to your right? You're talking about getting better. What, what are we looking at here in the bro barn? I'm actually I'm in the corners, so like where we store equipment. So there's, there's a lot of bars. <laughs> so, so yeah, beware. <laughs> it looks it's like probably, something. Yeah, my, my house is very uh, chirpy right now, so I had to get out here. I'm sure I'm, everybody's probably still celebrating. I love that. Uh, let's talk about your coach. He's been chirpy a time or two, and we love to hear it. He's incredible in front of a microphone. What's your best Nick Sirianni story? Uh, he's just an extreme competitor. Like when it comes to anything, he's very competitive. Uh, the, I guess the funny storyline last year was like, you know, he was talking about uh, our team, you know, planting the seed. And sometimes it takes a while oh, to, yeah. you know, reap the, bene reap the benefits of it. And so it was like our season last year. I think we started like one in three or maybe one in five, something like that. And and uh, so he got a lot of flags for that. I think there was something to do with a tennis match. I think he got a little bit chirpy. I think it was a Giants fan or some, like some fan. Um, but, yeah, just a little friendly chatter. Uh, so that, I thought that was pretty funny. Chirping and chatter out of Nick Sirianni. So much credit to him for uh, what this team has been able to do in a short period of time. Uh, I, I want to talk about A.J. Brown. I've talked about him a lot here on Up and Adams, this new show that I'm doing, and he's obviously always open. I think he's the best addition made uh, in the offseason as far as wide receivers are concerned. What did he bring to the team that was missing? Uh, he just has a presence about him, a, a physicality. When you look at him, he's you know, 6'1", probably 225, 230. And just, he runs, I mean, as soon as he, when he catches the ball, he's just very violent with how he runs. And, um, yeah, he just has that, that dog in him. I think he sets a tone <laughs> for the room. You know, he sets a tone for the room. I mean, really for the building. I mean, he's just a very uh, special talent. Uh, has a lot of, you know, unique characteristics. But, yeah, he does. He sets a tone for our football team. Yeah, you can tell out there. And what a connection between Jalen Hurts and himself. So all week long, yeah. the framing, you know, people who wear these microphones and put on the makeup and do the whole thing and sit with this lighting, they are all saying, how can you stop the force that is Justin Jefferson? I was one of those people. But it should have been, how can Justin Jefferson possibly get busy when he's going up against Darius Slay? You could tell watching last night from where I was sitting on my couch that it meant something to him. Did it feel like the defense was extra locked in this week? Because that was a message sending bounce back. Yeah, I think that and then having our, you know, the home crowd advantage, having that noise, um, you know, that really is a big factor. But yeah, I think, you know, talking about Slay, he just he played out of his mind. Um, you know, it's it's very hard to be a true cover corner in this league, going against the best athletes, uh, you know, on the field, week in, week out. Um, yeah, played out of his mind and he's a man, he's uh was voted captain this year. Uh he's 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 a great leader for all the, the young guys. It's a good example and and how he plays is just uh, unreal. So it's fun watching. Is he underappreciated? I feel like uh, you know he's he's got a great he's got a great personality, but just the way he plays, his ball skills, how fast he is, he's a he's a dynamic player. He's uh, he's unreal. You you mentioned Washington. It just hit me because I haven't even looked at. I don't look at that schedule till tomorrow. But you're going to face yeah. your old quarterback who you protected for so many years. You're facing Carson Wentz. How will yeah. you feel playing against him? 
man, you're really going to the game just trying to be emotionless. It's not like I'm out there trying to tackle him. So it's like, uh, you know, what's your defense? Well, I want to win this game. Uh, that, that, that's the plan. But, uh, yeah, um, that's really what it, what it boils down to. Uh, you've been in the league 10 years. It's incredible. Congratulations on that. And you have a very unique relationship with your fan base there in Philadelphia. And you're a Texas guy. You enter yeah. Philly, different worlds. I even saw a video of you that they had up yesterday where you're telling Philly fans to get drunk, responsibly, of course, but to go have a good time before this game. What does that fan base mean to you? I think they listened. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, you know, uh, there's nothing like a Sunday there at the link. I mean, people tailgating. That's what people look forward to all year. And, uh, yeah, really, um, they bring the energy uh, week in, week out. And, uh, it's, I mean, it's truly a football town. Like Texas, like you remember the movie Friday Night Lights. And this is how this place is here. People love football. It's all they, um, that's all they know. That's all they love. So when you, when you get a crowd like that and they get involved into, it, into a game, it makes it special. Yeah, there's just a couple more questions for you. We did, there was a fun tweet yesterday the producers pulled up that somebody, you know, everyone's talking Super Bowl now after how you guys look offensively and defensively. A Bills-Eagles Super Bowl in Phoenix, says Bill Barnwell, during Waste Management Open Week. Yikes. Your thoughts? <laughs> Uh, what, does Nick, what does Nick Saban say? It's all it's all rat poison. It's all bad for you just to, to read any of it, to yeah. get too much into it. Uh, it all makes for good headlines, but like I said, it, it, it goes down to week in, week out, and being consistent. And so that's something we got to learn to do. You're a perfect person for that locker room to keep everybody level-headed. You said it, eliminate distractions. You're a veteran in this league. Uh, and last year you were detailing your challenges with anxiety. There was an, you know, an intense NFL season, of course, that you were playing through. Has that approach or has it sort of changed your approach to this year and any thoughts on life post-football? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just really about adapting and learning more about yourself. I thought that's what I ultimately did was just learn more about myself and, uh, Became better at the end of it. I thought I can play my best football and uh, really in a good headspace. But yeah, um, you know, talking to people, I feel like a lot of the younger generation uh, would just, it's just a new dynamic uh, that kids face nowadays. And so I think just talking and being open with people is the, is the best remedy. What were some of the resources that you sort of took advantage of? You've been so open about this. I talked to Brandon Marshall about it on Friday. Everyone's open <laughs> about mental health now, uh, especially in the NFL. It's really great to see. What were some of the resources you took advantage of last season into this season that you can maybe share? I uh, really just seeing, you know, sports psychologists or therapists. You just really had to learn more about yourself and break down some of the walls that you may have, you know, being prideful about stuff. Um, but yeah, I would say that it's really about communication and being being honest with yourself. I feel like men sometimes can be very uh, stubborn. I'm not going to speak for myself and be very stubborn. And so sometimes it's hard for us to, I guess, fully express ourselves. And so learning to do that and, and being open with your teammates, I feel like in the end it's just um, the best thing. It's about communication. We are communicating to you. Yeah. We love to have you on the show. We are celebrating a victory Tuesday with Lane Johnson. Go get yourself some Mickey Mouse pancakes and mimosas in there. Yeah, yeah, we'll go find that. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you so much, Lane Johnson. Of course, we love having you. Big Eagles message sending win. The Bills took care of business as well. Coming up, we will dive into the fantasy waiver wire. Mark Ingram on the show. Chris Collinsworth will be stopping by. Can we queue up that, that Justin Fields sneak situation that he hated so much? Let's make up Chris Matt. <laughs> The season's going to fly. We are officially through two weeks of the fantasy football season already, and you've got to make some roster adjustments. I'm here to help you do that with some waiver wire choices. It's time for, hey, pick me up first. How about Jared Goff finishing seventh? at the quarterback spot last week after a four-touchdown performance against the Commanders. He is still out there in a whopping 85% of leagues right now. Listen, listen, listen. If you went all in on Trey Lance or if you went in on Dak Prescott, I like this option much more than Jimmy G as a replacement because you know you're going to get consistent volume through the air. Goff averaging 37 and a half dropbacks per game so far this year, while Jimmy isn't the most consistent fantasy option because the Niners do like to lean on that run game. Jared over everybody. Let's move on to Daryl Williams. 
Uh, he finished as an RB1 this week after James Conner went down with an ankle injury. 10 touches, 62 total yards, and a touchdown in the second half alone. That's bananas. It was a win over the Raiders. It does not sound like Conner's going to be getting a, uh, a significant amount of time on the bench. But if he is out this week, I do think it's worth snagging Williams, getting him in your lineup against the Rams. Garrett Wilson up next. Wow. He made it clear. Who's the numero uno targeto in New York? Oh, he is. He racked up eight catches for 102 yards and two touchdowns on 14 targets. Uh, unbelievable performance by him, which you love to see. You cannot beat the kind of volume. 11 targets per game over the first two weeks of the season. He's got upside as well. And he's still available in about half of leagues. So grab him or you will not get another chance. I'm telling you, grab him now. Noah Brown through two weeks. Uh, leading the Cowboys in catches and yards and touchdowns. Yep, ahead of one C.D. Lamb, Yowza. We were wondering who'd step up with Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson gone. Mike Gallup still sidelined. Well, this is the answer. Noah Brown caught five for 91 in a touchdown and the Cowboys win over the Bengals. He's got some chemistry with Cooper Rush. Yes, the undefeated Cooper Rush, future franchise quarterback, Cooper Rush, future Hall of Famer. Yep, yellow jacket, gold jacket, got it, Cooper Rush. And I think we see his volume increase uh, seriously, though, even more now because we are hearing that Dalton Schultz is banged up. Last but not least, here we go. Logan Thomas, you guessed it, found the end zone last week. Tenth highest scoring tight end so far this season, and he's still out there and available in over 80% of leagues. He was hurt and on the, on the sideline for much of the season last year. Let's not forget, though, the year before – or maybe I guess it's two years before. No, so no, 2020. He was third among tight ends in PPR behind only Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller. So if you lost Schultz or if you've been streaming tight ends, scoop up Logan Thomas against an Eagles defense that's been generous to opposing tight ends. Ugh, I love when you start getting into the point of the season where you can build up Oh, they're generous against tight ends. They let points in through the air and on the ground. And here we go. As we see, Jared Goff, Jared Williams, Garrett Wilson's crushing it in New York, Noah Brown, and Logan Thomas. You're not scooping up our next guest off waiver wires because he's 100% owned or should be Mark Ingram joining the program. After this, we'll talk a little Saints. We'll talk a little bro ha ha. How could, how could anybody want to fight with a team that you're on? Look at that face, Mark. Who would want to fight your team? I don't get it. Chris Collinsworth on the show either. Both. Both of them. Next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. I swear to my hobby that I lead. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready. The side of the score. The side of the score tonight. I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I obviously do. Currently in his 12th season in the NFL, he just went over 10,000 yards from scrimmage for his career. Please welcome Saints superstar running back and dear friend of the show, Mark Ingram. Hello. Hey, what's up, Kay? How you doing? I'm so good. I know it's your off day. It's early in the morning. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Let's get into some football here uh, off the top with last night's performances, right? Dominant Bills and Eagles. How about that Hurts? Another incredible performance. What is so impressive about him? I mean, I just think his way he, that, he, that he's been improving, um, just running the offense, um, controlling the offense, the way he's able to pass the ball downfield, because he was throwing it well and efficient. I think the one interception was a tip ball off the running back's hands. So, man, he, he barely had any incompletions. He was making the right decisions downfield with the ball. Obviously, his legs are a game changer um, for the offense, and uh, you could tell that his growth and his maturation as a quarterback, as QB1, is – you know, proven very, very good for the Eagles. <laughs> yeah, very real, real deal. Lane Johnson was just on Darius Slay. What a game by him, too. Two interceptions, shutting down or taking care of business, stifling Justin Jefferson. Slay was, was balling. Yeah, Slay what? was balling. I, why is he so underrated? I don't know why he's underrated, man. You know, um, you got to give respect where respect is due. And my man had two picks, probably dropped two more. But he's definitely one of the best DBs in the game, and he's been doing it at the highest level for... 10 years or so. So um, I'm a big D Slay fan, and uh, he's that guy for sure. He proved the world last night. And he could, you could tell watching that it, he, he wanted this, that he sort of, I could tell he prepared, he was given the assignment, and he really took it to heart all week, right? Yeah, yeah. He understood the assignment for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, my friend, let's just rip the band aid off and get into this spirited game last week between you guys and the Bucks. Uh, how are you and the team processing it now that you've had some time? Oh, man, we're good, man. We, uh, know that we were in a dog fight. The game was going exactly how we anticipated. And, um, you know, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a few times, had a few calls go the wrong way for us. But, um, you know, we just got to 
you know, get into the mindset where we can't do things to hurt ourselves. When you're in games like that against contender teams, um, you can't have mistakes and errors that hurt yourself um, in, in the long run. So um, we're fine. We went. We corrected our mistakes. We're going to learn from our mistakes. We're on to Carolina this week. So yeah, um, we'll, have okay. our, we'll be able to see those boys again. We'll be able to see yeah, those I boys I know. Again. So that's why I'm wondering. This isn't going away. Why is there... And you're, you're a veteran in the locker room. You say what you mean. You, you're very direct. Why is there such bad blood? Man, you know, those division rivalries are very heated and very intense. And I think, um, you know, I think the narrative going out that we have, you know, beaten them in a the regular season however many times, I think that kind of has some, you know, fire on it. And I think um, that they won the division. You know, that makes us, you know, we, we, we want to win the division. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, so I think just that... Uh, you, know, you have two teams that have championship aspirations, championship goals, and you have um, big-time players on both sides of the ball. So I think that's where, you know, some of that animosity, some of that heat comes into play. You know, it's a tough battle, 3-3, three to three, and, um, you know, we needed the edge to keep going. So uh, yeah. I, think, I, I think it's just a respected battle between two good teams. There is respect there. I'm glad to hear that. It doesn't look like there's much. And then I'm looking at this footage, <laughs> and I want to ask you, who's the biggest instigator, right? Like, who's star- – who's- but it's Brady. Brady is. Why does Brady get a t- get a pass? Listen, you can talk and chirp all you want, and I think that's what was going on at first. You know, Tom was talking to Marshawn. Marshawn was talking back. I think like Leonard maybe pushed Marshawn. Marshawn pushed him back, and then you see Mike Evans come out of nowhere and just kind of take a cheap shot on on, on Marshawn, man. And that's the second time he's done that. You know, um, I, I just don't think that's cool taking a cheap shot at somebody. You know, I think if you want to have a problem with somebody, I think you should man to man face them up and handle it like that. But, um, you know, in football, there's going to be a lot of talk, a lot of, you know, chirp, a lot of smack talk back and forth. And that's fine. You know what I mean? But when you start putting hands on people, when you start doing that type of thing, I think it gets disrespectful. Oh, so uh, as, a, as a man, you got to be able to stand up for yourself. And you will see them again. And it'll be appointment television, as always. Uh, You were out there doing your thing. Alvin Kamara was not uh, active for last week's game. How's your friendship going? What does he mean to the Saints offense going forward? I mean, he's everything to our team, um, to the offense especially. I mean, he's one of the best players in the league. And when we're able to have him and and us just tag teaming and, um, you know, getting him the ball in space, letting him do what he does best, making plays, I mean, that makes our team better. The more playmakers you have on the team, uh, the better off we are in totality. So, um, hope he gets healthy as soon as possible. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's my boy, man. That's my brother. You know, ain't nothing, ain't nothing different between us. You know, we keeping it pushing. We locked in for life. I we love just, uh, We definitely want him to be healthy. Definitely want him to heal up, come back so we can, you know, keep pushing on our championship you're um, do- goals that we have. Yeah, you're doing your thing. You're standing. You're healthy. I feel great today. Want to know why I feel so great? Because I don't have four fractures in my back, so I feel pretty good. Well, how is Jameis? Man, he, he's just so positive, and um, he's tough, man. He says he's good. Um, he's moving around good. And, uh, you know, we just all know that we just have to be at our best. And in the most crucial moments of the game, we can't do things to hurt, hurt ourselves. And uh, I contributed to that. And um, you know, we just got to do better. Always got to do better in every phase of the game. And uh, we just got to stay healthy. And uh, he's doing well, man. He's doing well. His mind is right. All our minds are right. We just got to take care of each other, have each other's back, and keep pushing. Big opportunity against Carolina this week. Uh, if we talk about some other storylines outside of your squad, because you're an OG and you can sort of handle what's going on around the league, uh, I want to bring up Tua. He's sort of the toast of the town here after week two. He got a win over your former Ravens, which, you know, right. isn't it's, it's not easy to do, of course, and Lamar was playing as good as Lamar plays. Uh, do you think Tua shut everyone up? Um, I think he shut everyone up for this week. You know what I mean? Um the league is all about what have you done for me lately and you're only as good as your most recent game. So um, I think he's done a really good job, you know, the first two weeks and especially last week, bringing him back from 21 down in the fourth. I mean, that says a lot about him and that offense, how explosive they are, how quickly they can put up points. But um, I think he's just going to continue to grow. He's going to continue to improve. He's always been an accurate passer, a good passer from all the years I watched him at Alabama. So now that he's healthy, he has weapons around him. He has a few years under his belt where he's confident, knows the offense. And um, I think he's just going to continue to make those strives and improve it. And he, I mean, do, do players see him differently than we do? Because there's a I lot. Mean, he's, the he's me- a bit of a polarizing character, and I like what you're saying. Like, you did it this week. you got to keep doing it. Yeah, I think that's something that is 
uh, very important, the consistency of play, you know, week in and week out throughout our league. That's what, um, you know, kind of separates. That's what kind of, you know, puts your reputation and your MO on your game is your consistency week in and week out. And so I'm looking forward to him being able to do the same thing he did in Baltimore, go into Baltimore, get a, a big win. It's, it's tough to do that against the Ravens, especially with how Lamar was playing. But um, you can see the growth. You can see the confidence he has in his playmakers. You can see the confidence he has in himself. And I'm excited to see, you know, him to continue to improve and continue to grow and continue to shut the media up because I'm a Tua fan. So, yeah. um, you know, uh, you know, haters are going to be everywhere, man. You just got to, you know, continue to stay the course, not tune out the outside noise and focus on what's important. And that's your team, that's your game, that's your assignment. So um, I'm excited for him. When you're when this happens on Sunday between you and the Bucks, or like whatever's gone on this, are you, are people on, are on the team hearing from Sean Payton? Like, can he help himself but get involved? And don't lie to me, I know I'm sure. Have you? Did, did, what was his message? Was he texting no. everybody? <laughs> no, I haven't heard from Sean yet. I haven't really? heard from Sean. Yet. That's surprising. No, 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 I haven't heard from Sean yet. Yeah, yeah. But I know. I know, I know he's probably reaching out to some people, but I haven't heard from him personally, so. I imagine he's on that Fox set. I don't know if you've seen him yet. Have you seen him suited and booted and all that? Yeah, seen, I've seen what, him. What do you think? I mean, he's doing a good job, man. You know, Sean talks well. He's articulate. He's very smart when it comes to the game, knowing the game and understanding the game in all phases of it, offense, defense, special teams, um, attitude, uh, demeanor, all of those things. He's very great with those things. So yeah. um, I think he's doing a really good job on the set. And, uh... You know, I, I'm just picturing. I'm picturing him, Mark, just sitting there, watching this happen, this fight, and he's watching Bruce Arians send Mike Evans out there, and I'm just him taking off his shoes, loosening that Windsor not tie, and just like throwing his shoes at the screen and wanting to get there right away. Can't you see that? I bet he did. Yeah, I did. It did look like Bruce sent Mike, didn't it? It did look like, huh? Like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm not. I mean, I, that's what that was the talk on the on Twitter that he said yeah. Mike go get. Well, he was protecting his quarterback. I mean, you know. Nobody was touching Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was beating Tom up. Like, it's just a little talk, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, okay, let's go Let's go move on to this. There have been awesome running back performances so far this season. We want to get Alvin back out there, of course. Uh, Derrick Henry looked great last night. Uh, you, you know, you're really out there this week up against McCaffrey on the other side. But you're the best at hype speeches that I've ever seen. Like, you will, will get out there and you will do your thing. We've seen it for Lamar Jackson and all of that. So let's play a little something called To the Post podium where we're going to give you a platform to hype up something or someone you like whether it's on your team or around the league let's pick a running back so let's pretend uh we're post game or we're hyping up an rb who stood out to you so far this season who you got let's go um so far this year man um i'm a big fan of aaron jones you know yeah. what i mean I think, aaron jones, I think aaron jones did his thing this uh this past weekend you know what i mean went off had like a buck 50 or something, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50 in the air. And you can tell when Aaron Jones is going that the Packers are going too. So uh, they go as Aaron Jones goes. So, um, hey, man, Aaron Jones, keep balling, my dog. <laughs> keep getting your money. Keep toting that rock. Keep catching the ball out the backfield. Keep setting the tone for the squad, man. Keep setting the tone for the team. The team goes as you go, and they're going to need you, bro. I'm a fan of you. You know how much I respect you, how much I love you and your game and your family. So keep holding it down, my brother. Keep toting that, keep toting that rock properly, man, how it's supposed to, man. You're doing it the right way, man. Big fan here. Woo! I love very well done. I love, I love his family. They're adorable. You know, I'm listening to you say that, and you're saying you're the heartbeat of the team. Like Aaron Rodgers has to hate that. There's no world where Aaron Rodgers liked anything that you said. Listen, Aaron Rodgers is the man. Hands down, doesn't have to be said. But when he has assistance you heard him at the podium say when they had to run the ball how he ran the ball that it <laughs> takes the stresses off of everybody so not i think aaron Rodgers is 100 percent in agreement with me when he needs aaron and Corey dillon be toting that rock like that it takes the stress off of him it takes the defense off the field and you know it makes him better he's a hype man for running backs if you think that somebody needs a speech a hype speech after week three this is the guy who'll do it next week mark ingram we love you enjoy your day off uh i don't know why you're standing but you're making me nervous so i'm gonna let you go why are you standing i'm not standing i'm sitting down oh I'm are you down. i thought you were standing no i'm on like a little bar stool what is this <laughs> angle i was like why are you i thought you were on one of those like walking standing desks that women have in their offices no, no. I, I was trying to ask about the angle. I didn't know if it was good, bad, or if it was weird. But it's great. Yeah, I'm just sitting on a bar stool right now. It's perfect. Using my daughter's Enjoy. iPad. 
Enjoy your day <laughs> off. We will see you, and good luck against Carolina. Go kill him. All right, thanks. All right, thank you, Mark Ingram, joining us from the Saints. Uh, love having him. What a hype. He always starts slow. He's like, yeah, he did great, and, he, and he's the best running back in the world. And, uh, that's why we love him. Uh, what is the Mark Ingram tweet, Conrad? What are you talking about? All right, shout out from the Saints to Mark Ingram. 10,000 career yards for him and still counting. Alex, I see you. We run social over there for the Saints. We love them. We love him. And we love Chris Collinsworth, who will be joining us uh, soon at this. Time to hit the lights, where we shine a spotlight on a player who had a Hollywood-like outstanding performance in week two on or off the field. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a player. It can be whoever. But we're going to start with Hayden Hurst, everybody. This has been the biggest silver lining in the midst of a really rough go for the Bengals to start. I love him for what he's done off the field uh, because he's been so outspoken and transparent about mental health issues, and he's done so many great things for the Hayden Hurst Family Foundation. I've talked to him about it several times over the years, but he's had some tough breaks on the field. He was drafted first round by the Ravens, right? Uh, I don't know. If, I guess we don't have any footage of him, but I want to tell this story. Maybe we can even come on camera for this. Uh, he was drafted in the same draft class as All-Pro Mark Andrews, everybody, right? So then he gets sent to Atlanta in 2020. He put together a strong season, but the Falcons, of course, drafted this unicorn monster player named Kyle Pitts. So he goes to Cincinnati this offseason to replace C.J. Uzama, and it looks like he's finally found a home, right? He's quickly becoming one of Joe Burrow's go-to guys in big spots. He leads the NFL right now, six catches on third down, clutch moments through these first two weeks, including... I mean, he had a couple of huge grabs for the Bengals in that game-tying drive in Dallas. So I do think this is a player to keep your eye on. He's going to thrive uh, once the Bengals figure out the O-line situation. And that's what I'm going to talk to Chris Collinsworth about because we need to fix something. And all I'm thinking is why didn't you draft or not, why didn't you sign and pay Teron Armstead? So that's one of our nominations. If you have any to hook us up with, uh, at Up and Adams is where you put those. Um, Aiden Hutchinson has to get some love here on the segment. Slow start to the season. Second overall pick racked up three sacks and Lions win over the Commanders. Not just about performance here on the field, though. It did mean a lot to a five-year-old Lions fan named Hudson Gazzi. So when Hudson was diagnosed with leukemia a few weeks ago, I, mean, I don't know if we have a picture of him or, or any of this, but Aiden basically got in touch with him through the team. Oh, here it is right here. An amazing, amazing three-sack performance. But uh, he's been corresponding with this young fan ever since getting in touch with him. So then there was the post-game press conference, and Aiden revealed he was dedicating his breakup performance, these three sacks, to Hudson. Uh, and it's really fun to see. It's awesome to see. And it's just his second game, Hutchinson, a rookie, should be focused on maybe anything but, or you'd be thinking that he would. He's already focused on making an impact there on the field and in his home state. So that, if that's not a winner uh, and it hit the lights nominee, I don't know what is. We are, unfortunately, going to give it to someone else because it's someone I just think that needs a little love. Christian Kirk, because the re reaction online was so brutal. I've never seen anything like it. Christian Kirk, was I one of them? Kind of, sure. I poked in on the fun. Four years, $72 million. Are we joking? You could sign this deal with the Jags. It was an intense deal. There were jokes at the Jags' expense. There was outrage over Kirk making more per year than guys like Mike Evans and Tyler Lockett. Well, Kirk is taking that energy and throwing it in everyone's face because he has become Trevor Lawrence's favorite target already. 78 yards and two touchdowns in that win over the Colts. He currently ranks seventh in the league in receiving. Do you want to know who that's more than, Brian? It's more than Jamar Chase. More than Devontae Adams, more than Terry McLaurin, and even more than emerging star. And if you looked at fantasy football as a Hall of Fame thing, uh, future Hall of Famer, Amon St. Brown. So I just hope those people who were so quick to bring the hate in and the jokes in March are just as quick with their apologies as Kirk continues to crush it all year long. Does it mean they get to the playoffs? Which is probably what they were hoping playing in the order? That's not. That's not what this segment is for. It's about hitting the lights. So we hit the lights on those guys, and I'm sure we missed a ton. So hit us up uh, at Up and Adam Show for all of that. We were going to look at some, I don't know, I think uh, Conrad has some tweets. I know Chris Collinsworth is waiting. We'll get to him quickly after the break, but uh, Conrad, are we good? Yeah, I mean, I think there's I think there's one tweet in particular before we get to Chris that I found to be absolutely amazing from last night. Just absolutely laugh yeah. out loud stuff from Darius Slay. I mean, look at this. Slay gave one ball to James Harden last night and the other interception ball says it's going to go to his son because his son's favorite wide receiver is Justin Jefferson. How about that? How about why does James Harden get a ball? 
Well, I mean, James Harden is sideline, right? James Harden, okay. Darius Slay, like, hey, they're, they're two guys. I'm sure Darius Slay will be at the Sixers games in the fall. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it'll go both I'm ways. I'm curious. To, I want to interview Darius and say, you had uh, two other interceptions that didn't happen. Who would you have given those balls to? Because I don't oh. know if James Harden's the best answer for that. Uh, Conrad, are we cool to take a break to bring in Chris? Let's do or? it. Let's bring Chris in. Let's, let's take a right live Right now, shot. or should we take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. Okay, we're going to take a break. And with Chris Collinsworth, please do not leave us. We will be back. Thank you so much. Ah, the goat in the building. Now, here's a guy who I can't wait to talk to. We'll be back. <laughs> Our next guest is one of my favorite people, generous with his time always, three-time Pro Bowl, wide receiver, yada, 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 ranks first on the Cincinnati Bengals all-time career receptions list. He has won an Emmy 17 times, pales in comparison to my baby one, and he's currently in his 14th season in the Sunday Night Football booth on NBC. Chris Collinsworth, welcome, 17 Emmys, what? <laughs> Jay, how are you, my friend? How are you? I'm so good. Thank you for joining me. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little. I'm a little worried though that uh, since you haven't been to Cincinnati this year, my boys are falling apart just a bit, and you are sort of the uh, the princess of the Queen City. So, yes. can we get a return visit, maybe, to get the spark going? Okay. Because really, you ignited the flame last year. You know, you really did. I really did. Maybe it needs to be like a you and me situation where we both go and take care of business. And let's start there in Cincinnati. Not only home to the print of the princess of Queen City, but your home, of course, and the home of PFF, which we love. And they've got all those stats. And they're not kind to one Joe Burrow, who has been sacked a million times already uh, this season. And by a million, I mean 13. He's on pace for an outrageous 111 sacks this year. How do they fix it? I don't know, but they, you know, they've been behind in both games. And, and let's start with they played two really good defenses, right? Uh, they played the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, got behind in that game, had to drop back and throw it, and Joe was getting killed. They got behind against the Dallas Cowboys uh, and and had to drop back, had to throw it, and, you know, he's going to take uh, a beating from that defense as well. So they, they clearly have you know, some issues up front. They, it's a carryover from last year. You would have thought, you know, they tried to do some things, bringing in Lyle Collins, bringing in Alex yeah. Kappa. They got the rookie Bolson over there, Ted Karras. So everybody thought it was going to be better. Uh, but it, to some extent, too, I think that Joe Burrow has to take a little bit of it and just go, I'm not going to make my guys look bad anymore. Okay. You know, I'm going to get this ball out of here. Tom Brady you know, is under 25 sacks every year for a reason because Tom Brady knows how to get rid of the football. So at this level of football and with the significance of, of what Joe Burrow is, you know, he's just, he's the franchise. He's everything to, to the Cincinnati Bengals. A, he has to stay healthy. So he's got to take fewer hits. And I think he has to take a little bit of responsibility to get that sucker out of there every once in a while. I literally have a question. Is there any responsibility of this on Burrow? And you just answered it before I even asked you. My only that's, other question. That's sort of that mind melt thing that we a, got going that's on. That's that Cincinnati oh, yeah. thing. Chris, but also, I mean, are they going to regret not just getting Teron Armstead? If you look at, you know, obviously had a high price tag, but maybe I, I, I hope the O-line gels and works out. I really do. Yeah, I don't you know, they, they, Jonah Williams was a high draft pick. So I think they felt like that they they had it covered this year. And it, it just hasn't worked out that way so far. But one thing we know about the NFL, uh, whether you're broadcasting or playing, it's a long year, right? Yeah. And, and the things that we thought about in the beginning of last year and what we thought at the end of last year were two entirely different things. I mean, they just are. And, and you look at even at the playoffs, you know, does it even matter if you're the number one seed and get the buy or not? Because the two first round, you know, the two top seeds last year got knocked out at home in the opening weekend. And we had a four seed playing a four seed and it probably should have been a four seed playing a six seed in San Francisco, but for the dropped interception right at the end of that game and the championship game. Right. So uh, it, it's a long road. I think the Bengals offensive line will get better. I just hope that Joe survives the year. So agree that the backup situation bleak uh, in Cincinnati, but I'll get out there. I'll fix. I'll ju just try. I'll fix it. I'll, there's your analysis. Just, you just and Tariq, wave, go talk about just it. Just give them the little tip <laughs> the of the something. tiara, and you know <laughs> it, it'll all go away, just like you did last time. It I was will. you came to town one time, <laughs> one time. Jack Collinsworth showed you a couple of yeah. fancy places yeah. to go to. You know the Chili Parlor and the Grater's Ice Cream, Grater's. and all of a sudden. 
you tip the tiara and that was it. We that's, were on a roll. That's the solution. That's the what's missing. You're so right. Here, I want to ask you about Trey Lance because he's done for the year some big NFL storylines with the great Chris Collinsworth. Jimmy G comes in. He guides them to win over the Seahawks. I checked PFF, as I always do, and I saw that he earned a barely above average overall PFF grade for his performance. Are the Niners actually better with Jimmy G under center? You have to remember that Jimmy didn't even get a playbook. You know, which is bizarre mm. until like three weeks ago because they all just thought he was going to be traded. So they didn't want to show him the whole playbook. And so he had to sort of work out on his own on the side. And I think somewhere in the back of all of our minds, we were wondering, you know, what is best for the 49ers. And we just didn't get a, to see enough of Trey Lance to know if he was the right answer. But we know that Garoppolo is good enough at least to take them to the championship game and the Super Bowl once, even despite the fact they got beaten and it wasn't for one missed pass on a long ball in that one. They might have won the Super Bowl uh, as well. So I, I think that immediately there'll be an air of confidence about this 49ers team. But remember, he's still coming off that shoulder injury. He mm -hmm. didn't get a whole lot of training camp either. So I think there'll be a bit of a learning curve here. That's a young offensive line. They're still going to get better uh, as they go uh, along here as well. Uh, but it was, there was a little, I don't know. It just didn't feel quite right yet with the San Francisco 49ers with Trey Lance. And all of a sudden Garoppolo came in there and it just seems like they've just sort of fallen back into old habits. And now they'll rely on the run game defense. And I, I think they're going to be right in the mix. Yeah, and now this week you've got Denver, of course, a mess with penalties and decisions and all of that. How do you use PFF to get you set for that game? No, we use it all. I mean, we use the grades, we use the snap counts, we use the tendencies. We have my guys from PFF will come in and they'll study the game from the week before and they'll give me a little breakdown, which is what we did, uh, did all day yesterday. Denver is an interesting team. I just got finished watching the defensive tape and – uh, they come up there with that five-man line and and really try to get some pressure uh, with Randy Gregory on the outside who came up with the big play uh, and Chubb and all the different guys that they have out there. So it, it's a it's an interesting team. I don't know how badly hurt Patrick Sertan is and mm -hmm. you know what that's going to mean for this week's game. Uh, but they have to get it going on offense. I, I mean, it was startling to watch the number of mistakes that they made and. It's easy to put everything on coach and quarterback and uh, and just kind of go, oh, Nathaniel Hackett, he doesn't know what he's doing, and Russell Wilson is a bad deal. Russell Wilson played fine. He was putting the ball where he needed to put it. Nathaniel Hackett's play calls were fine. They were dropping passes. They were jumping off sides. They were holding. Every time they yeah. started to get something going, they went in reverse, and then they got down to the red zone, and for the second straight game, they haven't done anything down there. So – uh, they've had six trips to the red zone. They haven't scored a touchdown yet. So that's that's the way you, you get beat in this league. So this week they spend more time in the red zone. I'll spend a little time at Top Golf in Denver getting ready for the game, and uh, <laughs> we'll be good. And, of course, <laughs> hanging out on PFF and getting set for all of that. Uh, I got to ask you while we have you, and, and I want to get to the PFF app and then have a little fun with you. At the end of, we're at the end of our show now. But uh, I, I got to ask you, indulge me and millions of NFL fans – what happened to the slide? Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so here, here's here's the basics of what happened. Okay. All right. So when Al Michaels was my partner, yes. Al Michaels did an opening monologue. Right, he came on by himself. Yes. And that's that's what Al has done for the last twenty years. So I'm like, I'm not changing that. You you just you just do that, right? You just do your <laughs> opening monologue, and then I'll I'll you know. So they tell me to sit. <laughs> Look at this stuff. So they tell me to sit on the, uh, on the desk. They tell me to sit on the desk, and they put a piece of tape, believe it or not, Kate, between my legs, and they put it on the desk, and they say, "All right, straddle that piece of tape right there." Okay. So I straddle that piece of tape, and I sit in there just like I'm going to be talking now. And so then the cameraman comes over there and he looks at, and so Al's going to do his opening monologue. So they shoot just a solo shot of him. And he goes, Chris, get your ass out of the frame. What are you doing? Get out of the way. So I go, well, you told me to sit on the piece of tape. What do you mean get out of the way? So I'm like, I go, okay. So he goes, just lean out of the picture. Your shoulder's in the picture. So I go, okay. 
So I just lean like that to get out of the picture. And so then Al comes on and he does his, you know, welcome to, you know, we're Lambeau Field today, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, da 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 da. And let's welcome in my partner, Chris Collinsworth. So then I go, I go, so then I just slide in. So then I still have my legs between the piece of tape. And, and so that's how the whole thing got started. And somebody made like a meme out of it or did something. I don't know. And then it started to become a thing. But my Tariko doesn't do the opening monologue. So what am I going to do? It's like I'm sitting there. I could lean out and then but he's be like stupid. <laughs> I was like, so what do you do? I don't. Do you do it just for effect? Do you do it for, I don't, I, I'll have to do it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll leave that way. As soon as I get oh. finished, maybe I just go that way. Or maybe you need another entrance. I mean, we'll take Fawcett up and Adam show. Maybe you could do like what Lady Gaga did at the Super Bowl. She came from the top. Maybe we strap a harness on you and plop oh, I you like down. That. I like that a lot. Can, can, you're good on social media. You, everybody loves you on social media. <laughs> Come up with an answer. I need an answer yeah. for this because I, I don't, I get a lot of like stuff. People send me a lot of stuff. Well, they want me to do it, but I, like, like I don't know how to make it make sense anymore. But you're acting like it's not like you like it was gonna go away and nobody was gonna say anything. Like the world is up in arms. We need our cons were slides. Like come on, you knew that. I I, I guess so. So <laughs> okay. I'll just, just we only have just we begin only... to fade to black here as you <laughs> as you go off the air here. Well, that's how we'll go off the air, but not before you tell me about the new app that we need to know about and everything you've got going on. PFF app downloaded over 20,000 people already have downloaded this thing, all the fantasy football, all the gambling, all the news you could ever want. You don't need to go anywhere else. Just go to PFF.com and check it out. I think you'll love it. We certainly will. Thank you so much, Chris Collinsworth, for joining. Okay, let's do it. Let's totally flayed. Let's do let's, let's practice. Oh, bye, Chris. That's perfect. Bye, Jay. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you so much for joining us. As we wrap things up, uh, we can say bye to Chris there. He's is he the best? He is the best. I had so much more I wanted to ask him, of course, about Jalen Hurts and his performance, about Aaron Rodgers. You know, he said, yeah, they need to run the ball more. And I wanted to ask him whether or not Aaron Rodgers has that in him to not just take off and throw the ball over the field if he uh, feels like it. Okay, that was our show. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Incredible. Of a guest. Big thanks to Lane Johnson, Mark Ingram, and of course the great Chris Collinsworth. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Maybe we could do like a. I think the Lady Gaga thing's good.